Good morning, everyone. Before we start, I would like to ask one question to all of you. Because I see youngsters here. How many of you are in a relationship right now? Just hands up. <laughs> there are very few people who are in a relationship right now. I see there are hardly medical students I know. <laughs> what I will suggest to you now is now the best part is that you all are not in a relationship. A few of them are. Good luck. <laughs> the, the majority of people are not. So let's start understanding that how can you find out whether your partner is a romantic partner through handwriting. <laughs> because in case if you uh, get into a relationship with anyone, and then you realize the partner is not a romantic partner, there are high chances that you will end up in this. Look at this. What do you see here? Do you see the couple here? The, are they together? I don't see them together. I see this man is more interested in Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. He wants to know what's happening in the, like, with the social things. But then, the point is, is he with his wife? No. Because always remember one thing, romance is a, it's not a phase of life, it's a part of life. You need to just water the plant every day. Romance is more about understanding that every day you need to talk to your partner, communicate with your partner, and understand that romance is not just a part. So how do you find out through handwriting? So what you all can do is, when you go back home, collect a handwriting sample of your partner. In case if you don't have, first find a partner. <laughs> once you get a partner, once you get a person who maybe you are in, you are in love with someone, Take a handwriting sample from that person and try to find out the letter K, the capital letter K. And then look at the K. If you are looking at the handwriting sample of your partner and you're looking at the letter K, this line of capital K, imagine a K. This K is you. And how witty is your romantic partner? How smart is he? It depends on whether Teer, jo teer wo chalayega, whether that hits your heart or not. Where is the tear? Where is the arrow? Here is the arrow. Now this arrow is supposed to come and touch the heart. This is the letter K. We are just trying to form a letter K here. So be seated. The arrow should come and touch your heart, not aapke baju wale ka heart nahi. So you're getting it. So we are going to now just see whether the K touches the heart or not. It's coming near. Please be seated. Don't move. And you see finally the arrow has touched the heart. And then your partner moves back. Do you see the capital K here? If it touches the heart, the K, this is the idle K that was taught to us in the school. You realize? This is the best K. If it touches this way, the person is quite romantic. And what if it doesn't touch? But let's talk about this. What if it touches? He's quite witty. He's going to be like Shah Rukh Khan. Smart and witty in romance. Now what if, let's assume it doesn't touch. Do you know there are many people in their life, what they do is, after the marriage period, after the honeymoon phase, then they get so much of work in their hand, laptop pe kaam karna hai. There are many things they have. Social economics, India, Pakistan, a bridge falling in Mumbai. They want to know about everything, but they don't have time to sit with the partner. If you find your K, something like this, or if you find your partner's K like this every time, you know that your partner is not touching your heart. He's simply going to just talk. Because he has no time for romance, he has other things which are more important for him. Let's, about, let's talk about this K. <laughs> now this K is a little special because if you see what's happening here is, do you see the triangle formation here? Because of the triangle formation, there are three angles that are formed. And the angles denote stress. So the unnecessary angles, they denote stress. It means for this person, romance is like exam. I cannot do romance every day. How can, I do be, how, can, how can I be romantic every day? It's better, I'll plan it. <laughs> anniversary are here, let me plan my anniversary, and let me plan something for Valentine's, let me plan for her birthday, for his birthday, 
So this person, for him, romance is more about planning. Is he romantic? Yes, he is romantic, but don't expect him to be romantic every day. So romance is more like an exam for this person, romantic, but planning is required. Okay? Now, what about the last K, the final K of today? What if you would like to know whether your partner is a cheater? No, no, we cannot predict future. I'm not saying cheat karega hi karega. No. Graphology says that we can know whether the person has the potential to cheat. He might cheat, he might not. Depends. Look at this K. Now for this, no doubt you can see it, you can see it very well, but then most of the times for a graphologist we have to use our magnifying glass. If you find such case in a person's handwriting, if you see that all three, all three are disconnected, anywhere segmentation is a sign of a cheater. The person is a cheater in romance. But that does not really mean that he will cheat. He has the potential to cheat. And then it's then your choice. Jana hai aage badu. Okay? Potential to cheat in romance. So now, let's move to another topic. And the topic is signature analysis. Now, why have I taken a topic like signature analysis? It's because it's more broad. If you see, when I asked how many people are in relationship, hardly. But I know that everyone has a signature. But how did you come up with your signature? You look to the left, you look to the right in your college days, maybe in your school days, and you said, Kwansa sabse stylish signature, I want that. You selected your signature on the basis of style. You just loved a signature, you just selected it. Our education system has nothing to do with signature. So it is I who will help you right now to understand whether your signature, what is important in that and what is not. Let's talk about this particular thing about the name. So let, I have a friend whose name is Rahul Khanna. So what happened is one day he signed in front of me and he signed as R Khanna. I asked him, why R Khanna? Why not Rahul Khanna? You know what answer he gave me? He said, Bot lamba ho jata hai. I said, Matlab? Bolta, Rahul, Khanna, kitna lamba hai? Nahi achcha lagega. I said him, so what? He said, nahi, it'll not look good. It looks bad, it looks so lamba. I said, let's assume that if I'm gifting you something, if I'm gifting you a car, if I gift you a small car, bot chota sa car, or if I gift you a Mercedes, which one will you take? Immediately he said, Mercedes, yeah, obviously. I said, nahi bhai, Mercedes mat le. He said, nahi nahi, Mercedes. I said, lamba ho jayega. <laughs> I said, forget it. It's not important to have lamba car, no? forget Mercedes, I'll give you a small car, good for you. He said, nahi nahi, I will go for a big brand. You know, what did he tell me? He told me that he wants to go for a big brand. How important is your first name in your signature? Understand this. Amitabh Bachchan, when he signs on Kaun Banega Karupati, have you seen him signing? The way he signs, Amitabh, then Bachchan. Wow! He's so proud of his name. Lamba hai to kya hua? He's proud. He is a brand. But you know what? He did not become a brand. He did not become a brand first for the society. He knew that he is a brand here. You need to become a brand first for in your mind. Only then will the society accept you. But what if your first name is missing? That's the reason I must tell you. Please make sure that your first name is there in your signature. There are people who would love to have this surname. Surname is important. But what about your first name? Sonam Kapoor also has her first name. Father is Anil Kapoor. So what? He, she knows that I, am, I need to make my name out. Sonam Kapoor. The Sonam word is important. Amita word is important. If you have a signature without your name, it means you are hiding your brand. Your first name is your brand. Don't hide it. Now, let's move to another part. Let's move to this part where I would like to explain all of you whether your signature is supposed to be a legible signature or illegible signature. But there are many people who are really not sure about the word illegible. So obviously, I'll explain you about the word illegible first. Before that, I would like to take one signature sample right now from the audience. Only one signature sample. Who would like to give me a sample? So there are you all are not, you don't have any relationship. <laughs> are you in a relationship? No? Chalega, come. <laughs> okay. Please come and have a, give me a signature. 
Is he very famous? <laughs> let him sign, let him give me a signature, then I would like to explain to you all about eligibility and legibility of the signature. Thank you, what's your name? Sohan. Sohan. Thank you, I'll keep it here. Okay. Let me explain to you about the legibility and illegibility. If you, if you are able to read anyone's signature, it means it's quite legible, it's quite readable. If you're unable to read a person's signature, it means it's unreadable. Got it? Easy? You want to see an example? This is legible. This is illegible. Now, what if, now assume, now imagine here, you are entering a shop and you ask for a bottle of water from a shopkeeper. The shopkeeper gives you the bottle of water, you give him the, mon you give him the money, and you start walking out of the shop, and then this shopkeeper calls you. Uh, excuse me, what your bottle hai, it's going to expire by tomorrow. It's going to expire by tomorrow. So what happens is, immediately you feel, should I take this bottle? Shayad kharaab ho gaya hoga. Chod nahi lete hai. Koi dusri dukaan se le lenge. What you do is, you ask him, bhai sahab, koi naya stock hai kya? And he tells you, no, ma'am, this is the last piece. Or maybe this is the last stock. And you say, nahi chi, rene do. And you give him the bottle back, and he gives you the money. This is scene one. This is the shopkeeper number one. Now let's move to the shopkeeper number two. Let's imagine you enter a shop, you ask for a bottle of water, the person gives you the bottle of water, he, you give the money to him, and you simply walk out. You put the bottle in the bag, and after two days you open that bottle, and while opening you realize that it has already expired. What you do is, you feel hurt. You feel that the shopkeeper should have told me at least. But the point is, what about the shopkeeper? The shopkeeper believes, am I supposed to Am I only the one who is responsible to check the bottle? It's the customer who's supposed to check the bottle. Why should I not do my business? I'm not selling this person an expired bottle. I am selling this person a bottle that, is, that has not expired yet. So now, I have a question for all of you. What type of, if, in case if you are the shopkeeper, what type of shopkeeper would you like to be? The shopkeeper number one, who is very clear, or the shopkeeper number two, who is more concerned with the business, he is ready to keep some secrets. So I want everyone who are the shopkeeper number one, the Gandhijis, come on. No, I'm not, shopkeeper number one, right? What about the shopkeeper number two? Huh. So many people, shopkeeper number two. Medical field, huh? <laughs> No, that's okay. <clears throat> but then there are many people who believe that I'm not a shopkeeper number one, I'm not the shopkeeper number two. So for them, I have something for them. So before I tell you about that third person, I would like to ask uh, you, yes, the person who gave me the signature, I would like to ask you, would you like to be the shopkeeper number one or the shopkeeper number two? Two. Now let me tell you, if a person is selecting shopkeeper number one, what is he focusing on? He's focusing on clarity. He wants to be very clear with the client. He's saying, business ho na ho chalega, I want to be very clear. The signature, signature is supposed to be very clear. But in case if you are the businessman, you are the shopkeeper number two, then your signature, if it is illegible, it is not wrong. There are many, there are myths here. There are many people who believe the signature, if it's illegible, it's not good. The person is a cheater. The person is not a cheater. The person just knows how to keep secrets. Now, he selected shopkeeper number two. I'm expecting, I'm expecting that his signature will be illegible. If you can focus here, this signature is very illegible, I cannot see his name. I cannot understand what this person has written. So it's quite illegible, you are a pakka businessman. Now, uh, what about the people who believe that I'm not the shopkeeper number one, I'm not the shopkeeper number two. I am somewhere in the middle. Bottle ki baat hai, I'm the shopkeeper number one. Do karod ki baat hai, I'm the shopkeeper number two. Are there any people who believe there has to be a midway? 
There's one person there, there's a second person there, third, fourth, fifth. So I'm going to There has to be a shop, there has to be someone, there has to be a midway. So what's the midway? Let me tell you. That if you believe that you're, you're, you are not the shopkeeper number one or the two, you want to be somewhere in the middle, you want to be more calculative about the situation, then you can have a semi-legible signature. What is semi-legible? When you write your signature, part of your signature is legible, part of your signature is illegible. That's the best way to have a signature in case if you would like to be the shopkeeper number, not the one, not the two, but someone else in the middle. Okay? Thank you so much.